Oh, curious student, let's see what is there in this question. It's a very good question. Listen, a metallic surface is first irradiated with the infrared radiation and photoelectrons are emitted from the surface. The infrared radiation is now placed by ultraviolet radiation clearly with the higher frequency now with the same intensity. So I told you in one of the earlier videos that when you have two radiations with the same intensity that is a very peculiar case why peculiar because the graphs and the features uh, the characteristics that happen uh, in this kind of a condition they are never shared anywhere even the books are silent on this the, the graph is not available anywhere like it, it will be it's almost the most elusive thing in physics so uh, let us now learn about that and I've given you the graph for this in the last video also, but let's see. Now, what happens is this is the graph that we have learned uh -oh, that will be created if you are uh, creating a graph between the photoelectric current and the voltage that you have applied across the terminals. So this is the graph and this is the stopping potential here that we have. This current is known as saturation current. Saturation current means that there is a maximum value which can be reached as per the current is concerned. When you are irradiating the surface, one particular wavelength, like for example, infrared radiation. So there is a particular value of the current that is maximum. So this is what is going to happen in this. Now, now what happens, we are now going to use the same intensity, but a different radiation like ultraviolet in this case, an infrared. The ultraviolet is having much more frequency than the infrared. So you are using a frequency which is more than infrared now. So what will be the graph? Clearly, because the frequency is more, the stopping potential should be more. Isn't it? Because the frequency is directly related with the kinetic energy. Yeah. So if I am extending the graph here, I can say that, let's say this point. This is the another stopping potential that you have in the case of UV radiation. So this is the graph that you are getting now. Two things that you have to notice, stopping potential is more because the frequency is more. The another thing is about the saturation current. What is the saturation current now? It is lesser. So the saturation current is lesser in the case of ultraviolet, which earlier you thought that ultraviolet is having more energy. Definitely ultraviolet is having more energy, but where is that energy going? That energy is not converted into current directly. This energy, which ultraviolet photon is having, that energy is given to the kinetic energy of the electron. It is given to the kinetic energy. It means that in the case of ultraviolet radiation, the electrons are moving at a faster speed, at a faster kinetic energy. They need bigger and more powerful stopping potential to stop them, which is clearly uh, shown here that in the case of ultraviolet, you have more stopping potential because electrons are moving with their kinetic energy. What about the red or what about infrared now? Now in the case of infrared, what is happening? The frequency is very small. If the frequency is small, the energy with which each and every electron is moving is very small. It means a very small stopping potential will be enough to stop the electrons from moving. Number one. Number two, but because the intensity is the same. Now, the formula for the intensity, a very important thing. This is very important because this is the point where Einstein uh, caught this problem and he said that, yes, I'm sure that light is traveling as a particle. So what was that? Intensity is defined as every other time you have learned intensity in so many topics. Now, it is power divided by area. So we can just say power is like energy which is falling on a surface per unit area per unit time. That is the intensity of the radiation which is falling on the surface. Now, they say that intensity is same for infrared as well as for UV. What Einstein said is that this energy is actually equal to the product of number of photons multiplied by the energy of one photon. Of course, why not? Because we say that light is not a wave, it is made up of a particle. So one particle packet is containing the energy of HF. You multiply it by N, you find the total energy which is falling on the surface. Now it says that this divided by A divided by time 
it is same for infrared as well as for ultraviolet so let us see what are we getting here nhf 80 is equal to nhf 80 this is the case of ultraviolet and this in the case of infrared now area of the plate and time we just assume it to be equal we can get get rid of them h can be removed because even h is constant so what are you left with n and f clearly n1 f1 is equal to n2 f2 what do you mean by that it means that if you are having more frequency lesser will be the number of the photons if you have less frequency more will be the number of photons because you are keeping your intensity same you have put this condition that yes the intensity is same for both of them what it means it means that the energy is same so if one packet is having lesser energy it means you have more number of packets if there is another light for which the packet is bigger there are very less number of photons so it means that in the case of uv radiation which is having more frequency n is lesser and in the case of infrared the number of photon is more there is one condition on the photoelectric effect and you must listen to this one electron can absorb only one photon even that is a condition one electron can absorb only one photon what does it mean it means that in the case of infrared you have more number of photons and it is capable of getting electron out like the energy of the photon is more than one photon clearly infrared is having more number of photons means it is getting more number of electrons out of the surface so more number of electron out of the surface means more is the that is why in the case of infrared radiation the current is more and in the case of uv radiation the current is lesser in spite of the fact that ultraviolet is having more energy this video i will say is one of the most important videos as per the photoelectric effect is concerned so you need to understand this thing properly okay okay then let us now come back to the question what will be the change Okay, what will be the change in kinetic energy of the photoelectron and the rate at which they are ejected? So kinetic energy, now when you are moving from infrared to ultraviolet, so the frequency is more. Now one thing is clear that the kinetic energy is going to increase because the stopping potential is higher. We have already stated that kinetic energy is definitely going to increase. So your answer will be either A or B or, or C. What about the rate of ejected photoelectrons? The rate is how many electrons are coming out in one second? So the rate is definitely going to go down because now the number of electrons are going to reduce. It means that this is going to decrease. What does it mean? The answer is A. Let's see. Yes, of course, the answer is A. And this is how we do this question, my dear student. Again, I repeat, this is one of the most important videos you can ever watch in the field of photoelectric effect. So this... Um, very near to you i have seen a trend there in ib they are consistently asking this question like on this topic they're consistently asking questions so there will be no surprise if they ask one more question based on the same concept although the books are not teaching anything about it everything is silent about this topic but still you would be getting questions from this topic so this is a very important video this is Professor Varun. Thanks for watching. All the best. See you in the next video. Please share the video with all your friends and uh, also join the YouTube channel.